All right, so what we have here is the Samsung Odyssey headset, and it is supposed to be the ultimate mixed reality headset that Microsoft has to offer for the mainstream. So this thing has an OLED screen, it has a higher resolution, and it is also the most expensive one. I spent $780 for this thing Canadian, so it's pretty damn expensive here in Canada. But what makes this thing special is, of course, it's got an OLED screen, it's got some headphones, it is more comfortable, it's more refined, and of course, it has a higher resolution display. But anyways, you probably already know about this stuff, so let's go ahead and unbox it. So not gonna lie here, the box is pretty janky, and just like I have read on Reddit, it's nothing special, it's just a white box. And it is pretty beat up, and the box that it came in was also beat up, so I don't know what's going on here. It's supposed to be a premium, but who cares? Let's go ahead and unbox it. Hopefully I didn't get some kind of return unit because that's what it looks like. Honestly, I don't know. You can see we got some cheaply made stickers on the sides. Open that up. All right, so first of all, we get some AA batteries, two packs. So we get four AA batteries for whatever reason, pro pack. And I'm guessing these are for the controls themselves. So I guess the controls run off batteries, regular batteries that is. Then we have the user manual and uh, a microfiber cloth. Toss that away, toss that away. And the rest of the headset is pretty much just thrown in there. Just like the headset that we have checked out before, which was the HP headset. And it was just pretty much the same layout. No cost wasted on boxing. So, so that's what I would say is a pretty boring unboxing. So here we have the controllers. We're gonna take a look at those. And uh, we have the headset, put that aside. Let's get started with the controls here. Now, I've read and heard that the controls here are actually rounder than the usual ones that you'd get with the other Microsoft headsets. So at least that's cool. It's more unique, I guess. Let's take it out. There we go. And yep, that's what it looks like. So that is the left controller, I believe, and it feels pretty good. So we get the grip controls right here, and that's where the batteries will go. Hopefully we'll get some rechargeable packs. The triggers here are not like the Vive, where the Vive, if you notice, it actuates and then it has a click right in the end. So this one doesn't have it, it's just like a regular controller that you get, just like the ones that you see in the background here. So no clicks, that's the Vive, and and that's the Microsoft controller. So yeah, uh, we got metal clicks right here, we got a touchpad just like the Vive here. The one on the Vive is more tactile. The one here, I gotta say, it's not uniform. It's not perfect like the Vive where, whatever you press it, it feels good. Here it's kind of, on the bottom here, it feels really mushy, on the top it feels really good. So here's what it sounds like. That's the bottom, that's the top. So. You see what I'm talking about here. Home button, menu button, and that's it. So, pretty straightforward, very similar controls. Let's move on. So here are both controllers side by side. You can see what they look like. And the nice thing is, you can just toss them like that, and they have their own stand, so that's really cool. Unlike the Vive here, you really have to like waste a lot of space when putting it down, and it wobbles a lot. So here they are side by side. Oh yeah, and we have a Samsung logo right here and on the back it tells you which side is the correct side. So that is the left side and that is the right side. There you go. And finally, we have the headset itself. The holy grail of the Microsoft Mixed Reality, Mixed Reality headset. So here we go. So yeah, here's the cable. It should be enough to cover a small room and uh, allow you to do room scale. Basically, this whole headset runs off a USB and an HDMI cable. So pretty much the only connections you need to hook up are these two connections and you're pretty much ready to go to do some room scale VR or pretty much anything else. That is until Steam VR becomes available for these type of headsets. Anyways, let's take a closer look at this premium device. Of course, we got the headband here, and it is very similar to the PSVR design. It also has some built-in headphones that are AKG certified or something. So you're right there, you can see that. Got a Mixed Reality logo right there. You can see how easy it is to get smudged up. So it is nice that they included this microfiber cloth, but of course, we all know for sure this thing is just gonna end up with a ton of scratches on the front, which is unfortunate. So of course, here are the cameras that track pretty much everything and allow you to see the real world while it is mixed up with the virtual world. So basically that's what allows you to do tracking of the controllers, the headset itself, the environment, and allow you to see what's around you. I mean, I've already seen it. It works very well with the HP headset, but that headset wasn't really good. And I was really disappointed with the display. So the headphones here can go up and down, which is really nice. And just like the Vive, they can clip on and really stay on your ear. And they also rotate, so that's cool. And you might be able to detach them if you need to. So we're gonna be trying that out later on. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the padding here. I gotta say here, you get some really nice firm padding. It has a really soft layer, but it's also very, very cushiony. You can see that this thing is very well padded, and especially here as well. So we got some uh, lighter cushioning, but it's all kind of a leatherette kind of texture, which is really good. And uh, we're gonna see how that does with moisture. And face pad here is also the same material, so 
there's no differentiating thing. The earbuds, the face pad, the padding, all around this thing is pretty much the same material. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering what these are, it seems like these are actually non-detachable and they're meant to keep you from seeing the outside world and having a nose gap. If you guys remember in some of the Oculus headsets, the nose gap is so big that you can actually see through them from under. Um, here we have the IPD adjustments, I believe. And yep, yeah, there we go. So uh, very nice to see. And then we have the volume up and down, I guess, and that might be a microphone. And um, here are the lens. So let's take a closer look here. First, uh, unpeel therapy. There we go. And of course, we've got the proximity sensor right here that detects when you have the headset on or off, which would allow it to automatically turn on and off the displays to save battery and whatnot. And right on top of the face pad, we got some information. So this thing runs off 5 volts at 900 milliamps, which is pretty power efficient. Samsung HMD Odyssey, October 2017. So this thing was pretty much produced last month. So yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this headset. There's nothing actually to talk about. It's just a hardware, and uh, you guys have probably seen it multiple times. But these are just some details that are close up. But the main thing that I'm really excited about is to see how nice the display here is because I have looked at the HP headset and I was completely disappointed and the brightness levels were so dim the colors in my opinion were dull and it reminded me of the Pimax 4K which also had a very dim display and dull colors and I got this one mainly for its OLED display and on top of that of course you get these nice built-in headphones which will be more convenient and hopefully this thing will be much more comfortable which I have heard it is. So, and we're gonna find out if you should get this thing and if it's worth the extra money over the Oculus because not only it's got mixed reality and it's gonna be able to run Steam VR, is that you only need two connect, two connectors right here and you're good to go. No base stations, none of that. Of course, you are limited when it comes to tracking, but you can pretty much hook this up anywhere and on almost any kind of hardware and be good to go to try out some experiences. So, we're gonna find out if this thing is worth it. But anyways, enough talk. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up, try it out, and we'll be back in just a bit. Alright, so as soon as you plug this thing in on Windows 10 with the latest updates, you'll get this screen. You'll get a dedicated application that you turn on from the start menu that is called Samsung HMD Odyssey Setup. So let's go ahead and click continue right here. And then you get a diagram of uh, how the headset works and uh, all the cool adjustments. And then uh, says plug in your cables, blah, 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 connection, firmware. Okay, so we're firmware 1.0.5. And then we click next. And uh, we get the free games. So rocks and rails, we download that for free. Let's go ahead and do that right here. And the other game is still coming soon, and I think that's it. I mean, is there anything else to do? Enjoy mixed reality experiences for free, and that's it. It doesn't tell you what to do next. It just tells you, here, download this game, and that's it. So we're going to wait for this game to download, and uh, I might just go ahead and get Space Pirate Trainer, and just might as well buy it now. And it seems like we got a pretty decent amount of games. So we got Halo Recruit, which a lot of people have got to play because it's free. Uh, Arizona Sunshine, again, that is a pretty damn expensive game. Anyways, it seems like my downloads are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead, launch Space Pirate Trainer, try the other games, and let you guys know what I think about this thing. So, all right, so here we go. My first time into a mixed reality headset playing games. Let's do this. Except there was actually a change of plans, and that is because apparently in order to get the controls working, your computer has to have Bluetooth, which my desktop didn't have any. So I had to go on Amazon, order a dongle, and uh, while that's happening, it's not coming until tomorrow. And right now it's 12.46 a.m. and I'm recording pretty late, and that is because there was a ton of downtime. As you see, I decided to go ahead and use this opportunity to try out this mixed reality headset and see if their claims are what they say. And that is to run it on some low-end hardware. Now, that said, the laptop that we have ran it on was an MSI gaming laptop. It's a low-end gaming laptop that had a KB like i7 with a GTX 1050 Ti and 8GB of DDR4 RAM. So, not the worst hardware, but in the future videos, we're going to be trying out some other low-end hardware, even lower than this laptop. So yeah, the journey began, turned on the laptop, plugged in the headset, and this laptop wasn't updated. So I waited, and waited, and waited, and waited and waited and waited for the Windows updates and eventually I had to wait some more. Oh, it's finally, it's finally done. It's, it's, oh, oh no, oh no. What is this guy laughing? Why is this guy smiling? Nobody should be this excited for a Windows update. Come on, Microsoft, come on. What? Look at this guy, he's so happy. Look at this kid. Like, yeah, I can't wait to get this Windows update and screw up my computer. Oh no. Well, I guess I'll have to wait for another four hours or something. Oh, back to editing. And then finally, we're inside Windows with the new update. So I plug in the headset once again, and I got to download a two gigabyte install for the headset mixed reality applications. And at that point, I was like, why does everything have to be so complicated? 
about five hours later, I got everything to work. Windows is updated, the application is now loaded, and the games are installed. And then I had to improvise a way to record footage. So here you go. All right, microphone, check. Uh, OBS, check. And uh, camera, check. All right, so hopefully everything is going according to plan. Right now, what you guys see here is what I am seeing. One thing I do want to mention, the first thing I do want to mention, is that the frame rate that you guys see here is not representing what I am seeing. Seems like Microsoft has a frame rate cap on the preview window on the desktop. So this is what we have right now, and this is what we have to deal with. Anyways, without further ado, let's finally check out the clubhouse with controllers. So this is where you spawn. You got this thing right here. That's the first thing you're going to be looking at. So you click on the apps, and then it will load for you. Basically, they're desktop apps. And honestly, if you're wondering, no, there is no mixed reality. There is nothing where I can see something in real life through the cameras while mixing it with something like this. So there is no app for that yet. What we have right now is basically a VR headset that is running a virtual version of Windows 10. I'm going to be able to show you pretty much everything in this room within five minutes. So let's get started. Let's drag something out here. So you click on that. We get the chameleon version of that boy, except he's using a bicycle instead of a unicycle. And basically you, uh, yeah, that's, oh, look, that's so cool. Whoa, okay. And then uh, you get, uh, you know, stuff like this. And then you play it and that stops. And whoa, look at this. And you can scroll down and take a look at the other stuff. This is what they define as a mixed reality. Let me show you what I mean here. So this is an actual 3D scan of some kind of astronaut. So that's what it looks like. Uh, it has to download and load. I mean, it looks pretty realistic. It's pretty cool. The sound, the sound is horrible. And you know, you can get things like that, scale them up so you could do this. So, and then you can take that and like throw it over there and never look at it again. Uh, you can get a fake cake, you can get a little doggo. And basically, you just spawn a bunch of things and look at them animate in front of you. That's it. That's all this thing is. You would think the holograms part of things. Okay, you can see how the controls are just, what is going on here? Oh, it was tracking before, fine, but I don't know what's going on. But you get the idea. Uh, to teleport, basically, you use the thumbsticks and you just uh, point them into place. And you go forward like that. Or you can turn like that. But you can do it with either one. Then you get this thing right here and it's basically a store. And it has to load. Okay, while that's loading, I don't know what's happening there. We got Microsoft Edge. All right, moving on. And then we got uh, Microsoft Store again. It's the same store that you get on your desktop. So yeah, you get this uh, cool list of things and uh, you can browse using the uh, stick right here. Very, very cool, yep, yep. Um, yeah, last time I came here, it says, oh, look at these great mixed reality games, except none of them were mixed reality because as you guys can see, they're all regular VR games. Um, yeah, so nothing much to talk about here. Then you got the photo section that views uh, photos from uh, your desktop and a bunch of different things. And of course, your Microsoft account. We got a virtual version of Skype. We got a, a nice view of floating islands. Okay. Then we got Groove Music. Nobody uses that. Moving on. Okay. And finally, we are in the theater system. And this is probably going to be your most used app in this thing. You watch videos on this thing and you watch trailers. And I think you can play videos off your local hard drive. Uh, we got a blueprint of what the area looks like. And then we can go drop right here. And of course, if you're sitting down on your computer, you can just sit back, relax, and, you know, watch some stuff. You know, it's telling you cool stuff. Look at this. Mixed reality. There is nothing mixed about this. Come on, it's just VR. And pretty much, if you watch a 360 video, the whole area is gonna turn into a 360 video. See that? Like, this is a 360 video of China, and there's some guy doing something I can't really see because I don't have my glasses on. And then you can go back, and if you watch a regular video, it will come up here, but I don't wanna play any videos. I don't wanna get copyright striked. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this section. You pretty much play videos on it. You get the idea that it's basically Windows 10 in VR. Uh, but there's this cool thing about this room. If we go ahead and click that, Whoa, check this out, it's so cool. It's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind just sitting back there and watching something in this cool environment. And that's pretty much it. So, this is the cliff house. It's pretty straightforward, pretty boring, and the tracking is going haywire. So hopefully we'll get that fixed in maybe future updates. This is what the tracking looks like. So we got some shadows, and this is what happens when I open my hands up all the way, 90 degrees. The tracking sometimes can track, so you can see my right hand is tracking. The left hand is also tracking, rotational and everything, so that's pretty cool. So if you're doing like Space Pirate Trainer, 90 degrees will work fine right there. 
up here does not work because the lenses don't see up there. So only rotational until I get really close to where my vision is and then it will snap on like that. And if I go down, you can see that as my hands are uh, laid down, you can see the shadow up right there. So you can see that. And if I go behind me, and this is about 10 degrees further behind me and it's, and I think it's still tracking. Yeah. So basically, I don't know if you can see that, the circle is about here. It's mostly where you're gonna be doing stuff. And if you're trying to reach something behind you, like behind your back, you can do that too, which is pretty cool. And it does work, and it does work in Space Pirate Trainer. Anyways, let's go ahead and play Space Pirate Trainer and finally conclude this video. Let's go. Come on. All right, there we go. Zip, zip, zip. And if you click the Windows icon on the controller, you'll get this menu right here. It's a bunch of things, a quick shortcuts. Uh, I can set up shortcuts and whatnot. You got Cortana, of course. And there are voice commands that you could do. And yes, you can type with your voice. So if you're on the store and you want to search something real quick, you can click on the voice icon and start speaking and the words will come up on the screen. It's not perfect as Google, but it does work okay. All right, let's go ahead and launch this thing. Here are the controls. We're playing Space Pirate Trainer. And overall, really liking the tracking. Everything works very nicely. The game looks great. The visuals are nice. Uh, brightness levels are actually really good compared to the HP headset. This is way better, but tracking and everything, it works. I mean, I could jump around, move, you know, go behind me and change the guns and everything as I would in a HTC Vive headset. And for some reason, the tracking in this game is actually much better than the Cliff House, believe it or not. For whatever reason, I don't know why. Okay, one thing just happened. The back cover for the battery just came off while I was using this. So that is not cool. Very easily, everything works as intended, no problems with tracking whatsoever. I'm pretty surprised why this works much better than the uh than the cliff house. Alright, let's get to wave 15 and uh, or we'll just play until we die and see how far I can get with this setup here. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, no it's not. Oh, that's my adventure. Nice. Really liking this new update. Whoa, 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 whoa.
Yeah. Well, lost boundary. What's going on? Oh boy. Uh, okay, so overall, very impressed. The experience in this game using this headset was actually really, really good. Very impressed. I would say it's as good as the Vive, or actually even better, and I'll explain why it's better in some cases. Alright, so this might be the longest review I have ever done for a VR headset. So I'm going to try to make this part as concise as I possibly can. So let's go ahead and get started with tracking. As you guys have saw, this thing was fantastic. When it came to tracking, the headset itself, it was on point. The only time I had an issue with it was when I was playing Space Pirate Trainer, when I turned around really quick to look at my ship, and that's when the headset froze and it said out of boundaries. But of course, as you guys have saw, eventually it came back really quickly. So tracking with the headset itself works very nicely and very convenient. I gotta say, it is the most convenient thing about a VR headset is having the tracking built into it. Um, now let's talk about the tracking on the controllers themselves. So there's a lot to talk about when it comes to these controllers. So let's get started with it. First thing I like about them is that you hear thumbsticks and the touchpads. Now the touchpads here, as I have mentioned at the beginning of the video, they are not perfect. The one on the left side has some problems on the bottom, so listen to this. That's the bottom, and that's the top, and here's the bottom, and top of the right one. So you may end up with a controller that has a touchpad that is not consistent all around. Uh, here it's kind of mushy, it feels really cheap, and then over here it feels really nice, just like the Vive. While the touchpad on the right controller feels pretty uniform all around. So that's that. When it came to tracking, as you guys have saw, it seems to favor staying still in one area. That is a possibility, but that at the same time could be also because of the software. And I've seen similar issues where if you run an old application or something with Vive, it will actually have issues tracking the controllers. You guys have saw with the Cliff House, the controls were glitching a lot, really often, while in Space Pirate Trainer, pretty much no glitches whatsoever. The whole experience was fantastic and they kept up very very nicely so pretty surprising just can't wait for some updates until the software gets refined and more compatibility becomes available especially steam vr because once steam vr is out these type of headsets are going to be a great choice for people who don't want to buy a htc vive or an oculus because of their complicated setups and you have to have wires all over the place get base station set up and get started and all that crazy stuff with this one it's pretty simple and straightforward all you have is two cables and that's it you just plug in these two cables into any computer uh, even if it's low end you'll be able to run the headset at some kind of level and you're done you set up the room scale very quickly and you're done that is what i love about these headsets it is a really awesome thing and i can't wait for the future of it where it will get multiple cameras around the headset itself and we will no longer need to worry about the controls not being tracked behind us which brings us to the overall experience for the controllers the only main area that i found myself not being able to track was actually above me there wasn't much that i was doing above me usually when i'm doing something above me i will actually look up there and do whatever i want with the controllers um, as you guys have saw with the shadows, the controllers will stop tracking, but you'll still get rotational tracking. And then when you put your hand down, it will snap back on. So that might be an issue in some social VR games, unless they figure out a way to uh, combat that. Because you could imagine walking around and all of a sudden your hand just stays there frozen, and your controller is somewhere else. And all of a sudden you see your hand just pop right into place where it looks awkward, and your friend is like, you okay there? And um, that's something that some people have mentioned. But um, overall, the tracking was great. One thing I did notice is possibly that the uh, refresh rate for the controllers here is not as fast as the Vive because when I move the controls around, it doesn't feel as smooth as when I move my head around with the headset itself. So, so possibly a 60 hertz polling rate, who knows, but that's something I noticed. Now let's talk about build quality and design choices. So first of all, this kind of design I find to be really awkward. It's uh, it's kind of weird to hold. Once you're in game, you kind of forget about it. But initially, when you put it in your hands, this kind of feels awkward. And uh, the main awkward part is this part right here. The middle finger kind of has uh, too much to hold on to. The angle here just feels weird. I'd actually rather have a Vive controller in my hand over this thing. It feels much better and I can move around and my hands are overall comfortable. But yeah, that is something. It's fine. It's not a big issue. Now another thing is this part right here. You know, this part actually can flex. And right there, if I add an extra little pressure, just a little pressure, this could possibly snap. Or it could just flex. Either way, I don't think these can take a beating at all. I mean, you could probably drop this thing and it might break. Or you might punch a wall and this thing can just snap. I mean, it's... 
being held from one point right here and it doesn't seem very sound and you guys can see here so it may be not the best headset for uh, extreme games who knows so yeah that's another thing uh, the last thing about these things would be the LED trackers as I mentioned before these are LEDs and not infrared maybe they are infrared as well I don't know but if you're wondering like I did before these are LEDs that you could see with your own eyes. So the LEDs that you see here are visible in real life in person, not only in the camera. So that is something I just wondered. Speaking of LEDs that use a lot of power possibly and a controller that uses Bluetooth to pair, let's talk about the batteries and the battery compartments. Now during my edit, I might have actually cut the part out where the back cover of the battery comes off. As I was playing, all of a sudden the back cover pops off just like that. So once again, here is clipped on, you can see and you can easily pop it off with one hand while you're using this headset in extreme situations. So that was kind of annoying. And then obviously when you open this up, it kind of reminds me of those old days where you have CRTs and remotes all over the house. So yeah, double A batteries. If you own an Xbox controller or an Xbox in general, you'll probably know Microsoft. Microsoft likes to have double A batteries on their controllers. Now there are the ups and downs, but obviously it's mostly down because you gotta buy new batteries and replace them every time. And most people would rather have a USB just plug in and charge these things. Now that said, if you are inside a long VR session, you can easily pop these out, put new ones, and you're back in the game. Hopefully we'll get some standard, cheap, rechargeable packs, but I doubt that would happen. So who knows how long these batteries will actually last. One thing for sure is these things can actually get pretty bright. And if you're wondering what kind of batteries they have included, well, they're mercury and cadmium alkaline batteries. So there you go. Now, speaking of controllers and Bluetooth, as you guys have saw, I had quite the journey when I was getting these set up. Yeah, man, oh man, I mean, you guys have saw the whole thing, you know, Windows updates, try to run out on my laptop, because my desktop didn't have a Bluetooth dongle, and they don't even include one, they don't tell you one on the page, it's not very clear if you need one or not, they don't include one in the box, and I imagine for a non-tech savvy person, I imagine they would have quite the hassle and frustration, because they're like, why isn't these controllers working, why is there no Bluetooth dongle included, why is this so complicated, hence what I said in the video. Um, it's not complicated, because all you need to do is to include a Bluetooth dongle in this thing, but they didn't. And they don't even show you in the beginning. And obviously, if you read the manual, it probably tells you there. But either way, they should have included a simple dongle in the box. Even if it was 15 bucks. Like, why not? And if you guys remember the initial commercials about this thing, they have most of them running on laptops. And they claim that these headsets run on low-end hardware, and it was easy to do, and blah, blah, blah. And that is because laptops do have built-in Bluetooth, but it's like they completely forgot about the desktop users. Like, what is going on there, right? Anyways, that is what I think about these controllers. They do work, and those are the issues that I have found with them. Moving on. Back to the headset itself. So overall the experience was pretty good. The cable for this thing is a bit shorter than the Vive. The Vive cable is about one meter longer or so. As you guys can see, the Vive cable is on the ground. It's completely flat on the ground, while the Samsung cable is pretty much suspended in mid-air because it's so tight and it's not long enough. Would have been nice if it was a tiny bit longer, but it's perfectly fine for most people and most small rooms. What I really love about this headset and these Microsoft headsets is that the tracking is built in and all you need to power this thing is literally one USB cable and one HDMI cable that pretty much plug into almost any computer and you're done. That's it, that's all you need. Bring the headset, bring the controllers and hook them up to a computer at your friend's house or bring your own and you're done. And one thing I wanna try out is actually go outside and see if I could run this headset outside in the real world with a laptop strapped on my back and see if I can walk around and have infinity walking distance in VR. That would be pretty cool. I'm gonna try it out. Someone might actually do that before me, who knows? But that is something I definitely wanna try out. Now the cable here, for some reason, I feel like it's nicer than the Vives. Maybe it's because it's lightweight and has more flexibility. It's kind of rubbery. Um, the Vive one is too stiff, but now let's go ahead and talk about comfort. So the headset here has a ton of padding as we have mentioned before and it's all leatherette and I have read on Reddit that some people are complaining about how it doesn't absorb moisture or how you can easily sweat in it. Yes, you can easily sweat in it, but I think the time it takes to sweat in this thing is very close to the Vive, but at the same time, I'd rather have this kind of padding over the one on the Vive and I'll tell you why. Because on the Vive, if you do sweat, your face pad is going to absorb all that moisture. This thing on the other hand, since it's leatherette, yes you do sweat and yes it does not absorb it, but what I like about this is it's very easy to clean up because with the vibe you clean up your face, then you have to dry the headset itself. And then even if you try to dry it with a towel, you put on the headset back on and it feels cold because of all that moisture that was in there. With this one, you can easily wipe your face, wipe this thing, just one swipe and you're done. That's it because this thing does not absorb moisture. And with that, it keeps it more hygienic, which is really nice. So easy to clean, easy to wipe off, 
easy to get back in the game without wasting time replacing the face pad or waiting for it to dry because you don't like the cold or whatever. Now the headphones here are just like what people say, they are pretty disappointing, they're nothing. It says AKG, but the audio here is just flat. There's nothing special about it. It works, but nothing really special about it. They're not that comfortable. They don't clip on like the Vive does. Um, they're pretty loose and kind of hard to adjust. It really feels awkward when you put it on, but hopefully in the future updates, we'll get an equalizer or something and we can adjust the sound levels. So when putting this headset on, initially it's gonna feel awkward. And that is what I felt when I first put on this headset. It felt awkward and I did not have a great experience putting on, especially as a glasses user. And I tested this thing out with and without glasses and the footage you guys saw with me testing it was without glasses. The initial Cliff House guide and gameplay that I have done of Space Pirate Trainer was on my laptop and I used glasses at that time. And I used my glasses at that time, which is the footage that I did not show you guys. The re-recorded footage that I did was on my desktop when I got my Bluetooth controller the next day, which is today, and that was recorded without glasses. So wearing it without glasses was pretty much blurry for the most part. That said, I can have a good opinion on the FOV, the brightness, and overall comfort and experience. First of all, I wanna address the glasses users. If you're a glasses user, you're gonna hate it. It's not the greatest experience. And uh, you can see here, here's my glasses. They do fit, but of course these glasses are going to touch the lenses. And if you're someone who has glasses like mine that have glass lenses, not plastic, they're easily going to scratch your headset's lens. And that is something that almost happened very severely on my Vive. There are some very faint scratches that I got initially when I got the headset when I first tried to use my glasses, but I'm like, hold on, that's not a good idea, let's take these off. But yeah, as usual, glasses are going to touch the lens, it's going to touch your eyes, it's going to smear. You're going to have two layers of lenses that are going to fog up if you do fog up, and that's not fun. So. The FOV here is very similar to the HTC Vive. That said, I felt like the display was further away from my eyes than the Vive. And it had, I kind of had more of a boxy feel. I felt like there was a box inside. And if I push the headset against my face really hard, uh, I can actually see the edges in my peripheral vision. But overall, the FOV is similar to the Vive, but it didn't have that very immersive feel as the Vive did. Maybe that is because the lenses on the Vive are closer to my eyes. The nose piece here is awkward. It's annoying and it gets in the way. By the way, it folds, so that's how it goes in. And it does seem removable. There are clips in there somehow you can use. But the nose area is really, really awkward. But one thing for sure is that this nose room is awkward. It's uh, These things get in the way and they kind of push into your nose. Now, you could probably cut them or just remove them or replace them, but you're probably going to end up with a gap. That's probably why they put that. It's probably an afterthought too. That's what it looks like. And if you're wondering, with my average size nose, I got a pinky between my nose and the headset. So uh, that's the kind of room you can get. Moving on, once again, we got the sensor. We got the lens uh, with the IPD adjustments. And it seems like you got IPD adjustments in software and hardware. And from what I've seen, there are other Microsoft headsets that don't have hardware IPD. So with all that out of the way, I think it's time to talk about the displays and the lens. The lens here are just like the Vive. They're for now lenses. And you gotta have perfect centered eyes in the center of the lens to get that focus sweet spot. Now, are there any God rays? Well, I think not. I actually have to go and test that one more time. And I'll put a yes or no right on the screen here. And if I did not notice them, they're probably not there. This one, I don't think it had it. but if I did. Here's the answer once again. Now back to the displays. So the display here has nice colors. It's much nicer, definitely much nicer than the Pimax 4K and the HP Mixed Reality headset that I have checked out previously, which I was really disappointed with because the display was dim, the colors were dull, and it just really wasn't appealing. Because the thing is, once you have a Vive or an Oculus um, and you experience that brightness and vividness of the colors, you can't go back. That said, the one thing that was really awesome about this headset, and that would be the resolution. So, screen door effect. How was it, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. With the HTC Vive, when I put on the headset, the first thing that I notice is the screen door effect. That is the first thing that I notice when I put on the HTC Vive. It's just like, boom, right there. You can see black dots around whatever you're looking at. With the Vive, it feels like you are using a 720p display on a desktop. With this one, it feels like a 1080p display. It's, uh, it's less noticeable. You don't notice the screen door effect unless you look for it, which is great because you can totally forget about it and enjoy your experience. And that is something I totally liked about this headset. The screen door effect is very minimal. I managed to take two close-up photos of both lenses, both displays of this headset and the Vive. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the pixel arrangement as well as hopefully the screen door effect. I haven't looked at it on my computer yet, but I made sure that I took with the same settings with the exact same method. And I did make sure that the pixels are easy to see and they're mostly in focus. And finally, I think the last thing to talk about here when it comes to the display, that would be brightness. How bright is the display and what is the light compared to the Vive? And I did try my best to measure the brightness levels of both headsets. At first, it felt like they were both equal. 
until I took out my cheap lux meter and measured both headsets, looking at a bright white display in the headsets themselves. With this one, I opened up Paint 3D, maximized it, put on a white background, and got all the way up close, where my whole field of view was pretty much white. And I did the same thing with the Vive, except on the desktop view mode, where I have opened up MS Paint, put on full screen, with also a white background. And I pretty much try to point it and see what the highest number that I got, and uh, the results are. With this one, I got the maximum of 174, and with the Vive, I got a maximum of about 248 or 249. And if you want an easier number, 170, 250. These are the Lux numbers. Now take those with a grain of salt because they may not be accurate, but one thing for sure is it does indicate and tell us something about the brightness levels, that the Vive is still brighter than this thing. But what is my final opinion or initial opinion about this thing? When it comes to display and resolution and I think comfort, it's mostly better than the other headsets. The built-in headphones are disappointing. They're nothing special, but again, when it comes to resolution and the display, it is much, much, much better than the other LCD headsets, pretty much all the other Microsoft headsets. So should you get this over the Oculus? And the Oculus, because the Oculus is cheaper now, it's much cheaper, it's dirt cheap, it's $550 Canadian, this thing is $780 with tax, so pretty expensive. So I would say only get this thing if you want convenience, an absolute convenience. If you wanna take this headset all over the place, and or maybe you're a developer, or maybe you're a creator and you don't need to play VR games and enjoy them. Maybe you don't need the highest end VR games. Maybe you just want convenience, you don't have the space, you don't want to set up base stations, you want to be able to take this out, go anywhere, set it up, and go back to doing what you do. Because this thing is meant for creators. If you guys remember, the creators update came out, these things were announced, and everyone was hyped out about it. It's here now, and it's clear that this thing is mainly tailored toward creators. Because these things are definitely not going to be able to take a punch to the wall. These are just going to snap. So I think that is about it for this video. I think I pretty much covered everything. If I did miss anything, let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to answer you. But um, until then, I think there's nothing much to do with the headset until the Steam VR support comes out. And I pretty much have a month to decide whether I want to keep this headset or send it back because... It's pretty expensive, and as a glasses user, I can't really enjoy this thing. I can't really have my glasses on and enjoy this headset without damaging it or or having discomfort. Anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. This is pretty much the longest video that I have ever done, again, and it's probably reaching about 40 minutes now. Hopefully, it's uh, shorter. And that said, I've actually done multiple re-recordings, so to get this thing as concise and as short and as clean as possible. Anyways... That is all for this video. That is all you need to know about this headset. Pretty much everything you want to know about this headset and what its current status is. I imagine it's going to be a great choice. It's just that this specific headset is pretty expensive. And I wish that the other headsets have OLED instead of LCD because... And no, there's no ghosting. The displays here are fantastic. So I will leave links for everything that I have talked about in the description below, including the MSI laptop that I have tried out, which uh, that might be the next video because I did record the initial footage with the MSI laptop, which is a low-end gaming laptop again and uh, I re-recorded it with my desktop after getting the dongle. So my next video could be trying out low-end hardware on this headset and seeing how it does. All right, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, if you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.